guys. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so this is my work. It's basically lots has lots of different scenarios usually going on in one image. Basically, I get a bit carried away and things uh, just become a bit uh, intense. And um, I work in edit editorial mostly, doing uh, illustrations for magazines, uh, for newspapers, uh, advertising sometimes. The occasional bit of art direction. That's my dad over there with his uh, hit single "Hard Boiled." Uh, what a legend! Some personal work here and there, and then the occasional bit of uh, direction as well. Um, this is the uh, most recent ad for uh, Round Trees, which I did, which is actually running alongside of the book project as well, um, which I'm here to talk about today. Um, around the time when Tashin got in touch with me about this book, um, I was doing lots of uh, editorials for magazines. Uh, this one was about uh, uh, space uh, tourism, or you know, sometimes I like to do uh, cross sections into people's heads or into buildings, or uh, play with like macro and micro scales. Um, and this is actually something I did years ago for Eureka Magazine, which still now I'm quite uh, proud of. Um, where if you look, so like oh, as you pay, uh, turn the page, uh, the kind of narrative changes and advances over time. So if you look at the caveman, uh, the caveman with the two little unimpressed chimps, uh, he then becomes part of the band. He's got some friends, and they're cooking a little hog, cheeky hog over there. And uh, then he becomes a composer and gets a full-on uh, orchestra with lots of people watching them. Um, so this is something that I wanted to kind of introduce and bring into this project that I'm here to talk about, The Earth and I. Um, this, uh, piece, this illustration is actually quite uh, significant today because uh, I did this piece of work for a book called The Where, The Why, and The How. Um, and like, to be honest, like, I don't love the piece of work, but um, Tash and were kind of scoping out existing books that were around at the time, uh, combining science with illustration. And um, they found my work from this, and it's actually a piece of work I did for free. And then I got this uh, epic task through of the book. So the book at the time was called A Book for All Seasons. Um, and as they said earlier, it's conceived by James Lovelock, who's like a 97-year-old guy, an independent scientist. So as you can imagine, there was no pressure there with uh, finishing the book. Not at all. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's a toolkit for the future. And um, it was the ultimate book of knowledge. And it contained 12 essays written by an all-star lineup of uh, scientists and visionary thinkers. So, you know, some areas I talk about, I have to illustrate uh, cosmology, uh, geology, climate change, all these different areas I'd have to kind of get my teeth stuck into and start um, producing some images. Um, so we first had our meeting um, back in November 2013, so like three years ago. We all sat around a table, and this was kind of just to discuss and talk about the project. And at the time, they were actually thinking about going with uh, 12 different illustrators, so one per chapter. But you know, I managed to convince them to go for the <laughs> cohesive approach with one illustrator. Little did I know the amount of work that I had to do. Um, so this is it, 12 illustrated chapters. Uh, five to six illustrations per chapter, all varying in size, some dull page spreads, some spot illustrations. Um, one opening illustration for each chapter, so that's 12, plus 12 uh, chapter icons, plus an overriding narrative for the book, so concepts and illustrations. Uh, so basically art direction for the entire thing. And then that number popped up, and I started to shit myself. Um, <laughs> So this is kind of how my head looked at the time. As you can see, yeah, it looks a bit like a crazy man's uh, notes, yeah. And I came up with this idea, basically, that the Earth was, uh, could work, like, the, uh, could be color coordinated to the Earth's uh, layers. But that, so like, the center of the book would be like the core of the Earth, but that didn't quite work out. So we uh, decided to color coordinate it relating to the chapter titles instead. Um, in one of the initial meetings, uh, Tashin showed me this, uh, The Power of Ten. I don't know if anyone's seen it. I'm sure you all have. But um, basically, this amazing video, which I hadn't uh, heard of or seen before at the time years ago, 
Uh, so we wanted to try and introduce this zoom in kind of uh, narrative throughout the book. Um, so at the start of the book, they started off, uh, so I introduced the icons as well into the book. So they started off almost like the idea was they're like broken molecules uh, floating around the page. And this is just a quick sketch I did. And then at the end of the book, all of those icons are kind of interconnected as if you've got like a, a better understanding of every single chapter. Um, and here you can see some little sketches of how it kind of first uh, started out. Uh, and then the final icons to the right. And this is kind of how that narrative played out. So zooming in, and then we see the icons on the Earth, and then zooming back out, and we see that it's the human uh, looking at the Earth as if leaving it to the reader to kind of do as they wish with the knowledge they've got from, uh, from the entire book. Um, so then it began, and we first, we started doing proposals, maybe like a couple of, uh, I don't even know now, probably two years ago, uh, started doing this proposal uh, for the first chapter. We did it on uh, Martin Laws Rees' chapter on uh, cosmology. Um, so here's uh, the first initial proposals. And what was uh, amazing about working with Tashin is uh, it was the whole entire process was so collaborative. It was amazing. So I'd suggest maybe uh, we could have this illustration flowing through the copy and so on. And they were so up for trying out all these different ideas. Um, but I spent like probably a year or so, and we were trying out, I was basically trying to convince them that I could draw all of these things, like supernovas, nebulas, uh, <laughs> a water cycle, carbon cycles, because uh, my work used to, well, and still is, I guess, quite figurative. So I was like, I can do this. I can definitely do this. Uh, and uh, cells as well, um, which is something we kind of played around with. Um, and this is how the initial uh, proposal turned out, the first uh, spread, the opening spread, which didn't actually make it to the book uh, because uh, basically I weren't too happy with it. I think years ago at the time, you know, I, I, like probably about two and a half years ago, I don't think I could have actually taken on the challenge of doing this entire book. But over a year and a half, whilst we were waiting for kind of to hear back from the scientists, uh, I managed to kind of advance and get a little bit better with my style. Um, but yeah, Mr. Tashin loved it, the boss. Uh, so we went ahead, and this is kind of how my brain looked at the start of the project. Um, yeah, scattered, as you can see. Uh, and it was actually surprisingly difficult to find inspiration on these uh, science kind of subjects. Um, but two big inspirations, uh, Charlie Harper uh, for his golden book of biology and Fritz Kahn purely for like the way they played with, um, they were just really playful with science and just intriguing and that's exactly the kind of characteristics we wanted to, uh, to bring to the book. Um, so then January last year, uh, I went and met uh, the Tashin team in Berlin again and we did put down 70, we were like five of us around a table, scribbling little ideas for all of the illustrations within the chapters onto post-it notes and then I had the realization that all of these things that I brought back home had to become fully fledged illustrations. Uh, yeah, so quite a lot. Uh, and if you look at that image, that little quick sketch we did in the meeting there for birds migration, uh, it actually turned out pretty similar in the end to how it uh, turned out in the book. Uh, so I had to draw anything from animals through to quantum physics, I think my naivety played quite a big part in this, these subject areas. Um, representing the water cycle in snow globes uh, as if it's like a little microclimate rather than the kind of stuff you'd see in a usual textbook. Or why not present uh, the human cell as if it were a microscopic factory with loads of little dudes uh, running around and uh, security guards protecting the precious nucleus. Um, this, so this here is, so it's like sometimes the scientists would come out with really interesting metaphors and anal uh, analogies for me to pick up on. Um, he talked about the universal trading bank here uh, as being where every living thing is a shareholder. So I got my inspiration from my uh, local Dalston post office. As you can see, the queue there of interesting characters. Um, and I just wanted to share with you this uh, email, which I got from one of the, one of the scientists. So I'd like have back and forth with those guys. I'll just read it out to you. 
Jack, we're a carbon-based life form in a stony silicon world. All carbon-based life depends on nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and H2O. All life traffics in carbon dioxide and oxygen on a some pay-in, some withdrawal basis. But even the silicon world behaves as if it is alive. Volcanoes recycle the water and the carbon dioxide from the rocks back into the air. Continents slide around the planet like dodging cars at a fairground, crashing into each other, piling up structures such as the Andes and the Himalayan, uh, uh, that water can then start to erode and turn into clay. Sand and millstone and microbes and vegetation can weather into fertile soil. Without all this traffic, life would blink out like a guttering candle. And then it ends. Just a thought. <laughs> just, just a thought. Just popped into his head in the shower. Um, so that's the kind of incredible stuff I get back. Um, so I'd start my process with like a linear sketch, somewhat like this. And then I'd build it up over time uh, with texture and color in Photoshop. And then it would kind of turn out something like this. Uh, and then sometimes I might start with a thumbnail sketch and then uh, turn these into to rough tonal sketches. And as uh, the team at Tashin pointed out, this actually looks a bit like a turd, but it's meant to be a fossil. <laughs> so as you can tell, I probably wasn't that advanced at the time when we did that. Um, but it hopefully didn't look like that when we actually finished the book. Uh, so these are all, all the different chapter openers uh, together, the opening illustrations. Here's a closer look. Um, yeah, so sometimes I'd have metaphors. This one was about um, life's merry-go-round, so I'd have all the illustrations spinning around, the sun which is powering it, or um, the caveman here with the first uh, tool of fire projecting up uh, into the technological era we're in today or uh, the earth as a seed from which we can spread into the cosmos, just beautiful analogies for me to illustrate. So I ended up finishing the book after three years of uh, working on it, was completely exhausted and needed a break. So I got married, and you can see Hank, Hank Doom there from the spreads, AKA Dad, that was there earlier. <laughs> Went to Japan, uh, collapsed on a giant egg, <laughs> And then came back, and this idea was still in my head of this synchronization between uh, rivers and roads and uh, cells and uh, cars. And I really wanted to do something with it, some moving image. So me and my friend, uh, Joe Bichard, who's here tonight, uh, decided to do, this is a storyboard, decided to make a short promo, and uh, here it is for the book. Three months later, this turned up on my door, and that's it.